countdown begins. Every moment counts. Now for the believer, it's not where you'll spend eternity. For the believer, it's how you'll spend eternity. The decisions you make today determine where and how you will spend eternity. I think it's amazing people that hang on to this unconditional eternal security. That you can never ever lose your salvation, yet they're sleeping with people and on drugs. But they're still saved because they prayed the prayer. Um, but anyway, they will hang on to one scripture, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And base their whole eternal future on that. Well, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but He never said you can't leave or forsake Him. I find that there are people today that read what they believe instead of believe what they read. Are you following me? When they read the Word, they read it through their tainted glasses of what their denomination has taught them or what the precepts of men have stated instead of just simply believing what they read. You know, before I got saved... I was in a denomination that I went to church every Sunday, but 75% of our doctrine came from men. I said, you know what? 25% came from the Bible. I said, I'm going to believe what I read, even if I don't understand it. How many of you know that's the fear of the Lord? And, and guess what? What is the fear of the Lord the beginning of? And understanding and knowledge. All three of them. I can show it to you in Scripture. So when you believe what you read, instead of read what you believe, that's the fear of the Lord, and that's the beginning of the understanding. So even if you don't understand the Scripture, the understanding will come. And that's how God has opened up many, many Scriptures to me, as I've just said, okay, Lord, I don't get it right now mentally, but I'm going to believe this. And when I believed it, then all of a sudden the fear of God opened up the understanding, and I got it. Are you seeing what I'm saying? God is amazing, isn't He? <laughs> Amen. So we're going to begin here in Matthew, the seventh chapter, right where we left off. And... Um, in Matthew chapter 7, we read here in verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So you can see this is not a works gospel that Jesus is preaching. He is saying, when you truly receive me as Lord, my nature is imparted into you as we learned in the last lesson, correct? And my nature, my grace, my nature gives you the ability to obey God. Why? Because grace gives us the ability to live for God from the heart, and it works from the inside to the out. Are you with me? Then he says in verse 22, Many will say to me in that day. Now notice it's not a few, it's not some, it's many will say to me on that day. What is that day? The day of judgment. Are you following me? Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Notice it's Jesus' name, not Buddha's name. Have we not cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So you can see he says practice. Everybody say practice. He's not talking about somebody that just stumbles into sin periodically. Or he's not talking about a babe in Christ that's trying to get free from something that they're, they're, they're maybe fighting in their life. Are you with me? He's talking about somebody that just says, hey, I'm overlooking it. I'm gonna, he justifies this sin or lawlessness or he just plays it off. That's what he's talking about here. Many of these people are going to cast out demons in Jesus' name. Now, can an unbeliever, a total unbeliever, cast out a demon in Jesus' name? That is impossible. If you remember in Acts chapter 19, there were seven sons of Sceva that tried to cast out a demon out of a man, and they said, we cast you out in the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches. The demon spoke up in the man and said, Paul, I know Jesus, I know, who are you? And ran them all out of town, naked and wounded. So you cannot cast out a devil in the name of Jesus unless you're associated with Jesus. Are you with me? So, who are these people who cast out demons in Jesus' name? They did cast them out. Did you notice? But yet Jesus said, I never knew you. Who are they? When Jesus says, I never knew you, He doesn't just mean simply, I know you. Because how many of you know God knows everything about everyone? Are you with me? He knows how many hairs are on top of your head. But 1 Corinthians chapter 8 gives us the answer in this. 3 is the one I want to focus in on. But if anyone loves God... This one is known by Him. Do you notice the word known? What does it mean to love God? To keep His commandments. This is the love of God that we keep His commandments. 2 John verse 6. Let me read this, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 3, out of the Amplified Bible. It says, But if one loves God truly, with affectionate reverence, prompt obedience, and grateful recognition of His blessings, he is known by God, recognized as worthy of His intimacy and love, and he is owned by God. 
All right, so when Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. You know what he's saying? I never intimately knew you. God says when a righteous man, everybody say righteous, turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, shall he live. All the righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered because of the unfaithfulness of which he is guilty and the sin which he has committed. Because of them, he shall die. Now, notice God says all the righteousness he has committed will not be remembered. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear God say I won't remember something, it's as if he never knew it. How many of you know we talk about it when we're born again, God says, your sins I will remember no more in the book of Hebrews, right? If you go to God and say, but God, do you remember what I did before I met Jesus? He'll say, I don't remember it. It's as if it never happened with him, right? So when God forgets our sin, it's as if it never happened. But when God forgets a man's righteousness, guess what he says? It's as if it never happens. That's why he says he shall die. In Revelations chapter 3, the book of life is mentioned eight times in the New Testament. Paul and Jesus both show us that all who spend eternity with Jesus are recorded in this book. Our names are written there the moment we are born again. Isn't that true? And so Paul writes in Philippians 4, chapter 3, he says, And I ask you, my true teammate, to help these women, for they work hard with me in telling others the good news. And they work with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are written in the book of Life. Everybody say, the book, the book of life. Now, the converse is also true. All those who are not recorded in the book of life are what? Are lost and will be sent to the lake of fire. We know this from Revelations 20, verse 15, which reads this. Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So all those who are saved are written in the book of life, and all those who are not written in the book of life should be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. Is that clear? He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. Jesus said, I will not erase or blot out his name from the book of life. Now, if your name is going to be erased from the book of life, what does that mean? It had to have been in there. Now, the only ones that are written in the book of life are those who are in the family, guys. Not the deceived, not the imposters, only those that are genuinely in the family. Okay, so we can see from the scripture, we're not talking about baby believers. We're talking about seasoned believers, mature believers, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have been filled with the Spirit and have tasted the Word of God and the powers to come. That's not baby believers. For if they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. Everybody say, overcome. So that is comfort right there. That tells you the backslider can't come back to Jesus. Overcome means they stay in that state. Are you with me? The latter end is worse than them than the beginning. Now look at verse 21 carefully. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. Do you know what he just said there? It would have been better for them to have never been saved than to have been genuinely saved, to walk away, and to stay in that state. It would have been better that they'd never been saved. Now, what do I mean by apostates? These are people that walk away from the faith. Now, they're the most dangerous. Want to know why? That's what Jude's writing this whole letter about. Because they set a norm of life. They influence the babies. They influence the wounded. And they influence those that are possibly, you know, uh, vulnerable to their lifestyle which is a lifestyle lived completely contrary of the laws of God, and they live entirely for themselves without the fear of God, and their influence will spread like cancer. Are you with me? So they're the most dangerous. Not the apostates that have actually left the church. The apostates that are still in the church are the most dangerous. They're not the ones that would run up to a minister and say, I think I fell away from the Lord. I think I heard us. They would never say that because they're serving only themselves. They are actually now living in an extremely deceived state. Are you seeing this? He says, these are spots in your love feast while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water. In other words, they got all the outward appearance, but they don't have the substance. They know the talk, but they don't have the love. They are late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead. Everybody say, twice dead. Twice dead. 
Do you see that in your scripture right there? It says twice dead. Now, wait a minute. How is somebody twice dead? They were dead, lost in sins, met Jesus, became born again, got the life of God in them, and then they became dead again. That's the only way you can be twice dead. Pulled up by the roots, verse 13, raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. The greatest punishment in the lake of fire is reserved for those who once knew and permanently walked away. The blackness of darkness forever. This is confirmed by Jesus' own words. If you go with me to Luke's Gospel, the 12th chapter. Now look at verse 45. But if that servant... Now look up at me. Jesus calls this guy a servant. He does not say he's an imposter. He does not say he's an alien. He does not say he's a foreigner. He's a servant in the house of God. Are you seeing this? But if that servant says in his heart, My master... Notice, my master. He is one who confesses Jesus as his Lord, Right? He is called a genuine servant by the master himself. But if my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat the male and the female servants to eat and drink and be drunk. So in other words, what? Serving God without fear, serving only himself. That's when you take advantage of people. Verse 46, the master of the servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him. Isn't that interesting? And in an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in two. And, now watch this. And appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Do you see this? Now, we know who the unbelievers are. That's, in, in our allegory, that's independent. So now look at this, verse 47. And that servant who knew his master's will, so he knew his master's will, he had tasted the word of God, and did not prepare himself or do according to his master's will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Everybody say many stripes. But he who did not know yet committed things deserving of stripes, that'd be independent, that's the unbeliever, shall be beaten with few. Look up at me. The blackness of darkness is reserved for him who knew his master's will, but yet permanently walked away. Scripture warns us of the falling away which will occur amongst believers in the days we are living. Isn't that right? Because we know from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day the coming of the Lord will not come unless the falling away comes first. Everybody say, the falling away comes first. So, right before the second coming of Christ, there's going to be a great falling away, right? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 says this. Now the Spirit expressly says... Everybody say expressly. expressly. No, everybody say expressly. expressly. The Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. So if the Holy Spirit says some will depart from the faith, it means they had to be in the faith. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires. Everybody say own desires. Because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. And the word fables means a speech, invention, or a falsehood, or a myth. So it's not just stories. Are you following me? It can be just simply a falsehood. Can you say amen? All right? Jude makes this statement. He goes through all about the apostates, and he says in verse 20, But you, beloved, notice he calls them beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves. Everybody say, keep yourselves. Keep yourselves. Say it with excitement. Keep yourselves. keep yourselves. In the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. You know what keeps you? is when you keep yourself in the love of God and you look at his recurrent turning as being any moment. What happened to the servant? He said, my master delays his coming. When you live with awareness that Jesus can return any moment and you keep yourself in the love of God, in love with him, you're going to be strong till the end. Because listen to what Jude goes on to say. This is my two favorite scriptures in the whole Bible. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. So after writing this whole book about apostates, he says, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. Look up at me and say, my beloved, my beloved Jesus, Jesus is able to keep me from stumbling. Amen.